What's up YouTube? DIY Tech Forge here. Today we'll be making a portable monitor slash television using only 12 volts. Stay tuned. So here's a 3D model that I already pre-prepared. And this project could be done using an older laptop that is broken or any old laptop that you're not using. This way you can save some money instead of getting a new screen. So here we have our button layout. So these buttons will be placed inside of the 3D printed case for this monitor. So we can use both the buttons and the remote controls. So this project took several hours to print due to the resolution I was aiming for. And after several hours of printing, this is what we have. Piles of 3D printed parts. This part in particular is the, is the rear support, which is also a stand for the, for the monitor also. So this will be at the rear of the screen. Here we also have our rear panel to hold the screen in place. And as you can see, majority of these parts have been printed in four pieces due to the size of my printer. Here we have our front bezels frame. So this goes to the front of the screen and we have our hinges. So this is incomplete, just printed into sub assemblies. So I'll assemble them a bit later. Here is my first model. So this model is the first model I made to ensure that the wires could pass through the hinges. So it's done to have a cavity for like the ribbon cables to pass through. As you can, I'm not sure if you can see, yeah. Through that get there, place our wires through there. So next we'll need to weld the pieces together. And we'll be using this 3D pen. So we're using this 3D pen to weld the pieces together, to fuse them into one uniform part. Next we'll be using some binder clips to hold the part in place as we weld the pieces together. And as you can see, these are just ordinary binder clips, nothing special, so it could be found anywhere. So let's get into it. We'll be using our 3D pen to follow this seam. And we'll heat it to PLA, just the 3D print is was done in PLA rather. So I won't be showing the welding of every single piece. So I'm just, I'll just be showing you this one. And here it is, fully completed. As you can see the seam at the back and the seam where we weld. So it's a little bit rough. So I'll be sanding this down to ensure that it's a little bit more smoother. And as you can see, it's still strong yet flexible. So this is why we choose to weld using this method. And here we have our hinges with metal insert. These are done for mounting screws. And here we have our rear support with inserts also. So the hinges will be connected to, the, to this rear support. So moving on. This is our front bezel. I went ahead and created a small logo at the front. And this is our button. So this will be going into the front of the screen as well. This is the circuit board that we'll be using. And I had a previous circuit board, which is this one. I had some issues with programming the circuit board. So the circuit board was broken from factory, so I had to replace it. This is the LVDS cable, and these are the main wires for the circuit board. This is the button layout, or the button circuit board rather. And this is our receiver board. We also, we also will be using these screws to assemble everything together. Here we have two 8 ohm speakers, so these will be going into the rear support. And this is our power supply, 12 volt, 2 amps. And here's the remote we got with our circuit board. Here we 
here we also have two side tape, so this tape will be used to hold the screen in place. And here's our display. This display was purchased from eBay used. And this is why I previously said that we could use an old laptop for this project. And without further ado, let's get into the building.
on the software side of things, here we have a table showing our pinouts respectively for both our display and driver boards. So the key thing is to match each pin to their corresponding channels. So fortunately for me, my display was already matched. So it's very crucial to have a pinout of your display because any wiring mistakes may damage the LCD. So you should always work with a schematic diagram for, for your display. So my display is a res resolution of 1366 by 768 pixels. And it's a 40 pin LVDS connector type. And as you can see, these are just the basic details of my display. So this project could be done using any display, not necessarily my display type, but just ensure that you have the pinout and the wiring diagram of your screen. Just to ensure that everything goes smoothly and prevent any problem that may arise. So here we have a firmware of files for our display. So this matches the board. And here we have an image that I will be using later as a splash screen. So whenever the device is turned on, you will see this before we get into any of the menus. So this is the firmware file that I'll be using. And the key thing is to ensure that it matches your resolution. Using the wrong firmware file will result in a brick board. So it is very crucial to match the display to the correct resolution on the firmware files. We'll be using these two files and placing them on a thumb drive. And you can see the video on the top right. I will leave in a link to that video to show you the full flashing process. Let's get to our first boot. On boot, you will see Chinese as the main language. We'll get into settings to change that to English. So I'll show you the steps into changing the language to English. Bear with me. So we need to press menu, head to our far right, which will be the last option. Those four, four dots to the right. Yes, so we'll move over to the four dots, press enter, and scroll until we see English. Uh, yeah, there it is. So it's just selecting English. As our main language, yeah, so as you can see, everything is now in the correct language. Now we'll have to move into settings and change the LVDS mapping. So to get to the secret menu, we have to enter a secret code. So the code goes as follows, menu 1147, and that's how we end up in the secret menu. So the secret menu is just to ensure that the, we don't have artifacts, that's what you're seeing. So just a matter of finding the current mapping for the screen to ensure that the display is showing properly. I tested a series of games just to ensure that everything was working properly. So enjoy.
So next of all, we'll be doing a song quality check. The audio test is to check the clarity of the audio and to see how loud it can go. And as you can hear, it's quite crisp and there's no baffling, there's no stuttering. Speakers are performing well. Unfortunately, we couldn't test any higher with our volume due to nice restrictions. So that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, and stay tuned for my next video.